I have a great honor and privilege uh, to announce our second plenary lecture for the SOC conference uh, and Professor Alexander Kavcic from the Alec Kavcic Foundation um, uh, with the topic, the case of free textbooks and educational software. And I'm very eager to hear your lecture, Professor. The stage is yours. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to be back here. Uh, most of the time when I was here more than 30 years ago, I was on that side of this podium uh, with, on rare occasions uh, at oral exams and then I would sit somewhere around here and have to do something on the board and this is the first time on this side. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, th this talk is not going to be technical at all. Uh, it will, however, if there is an element of engineering, uh, there's probably an element of social engineering. So uh, we can start the presentation. It's okay. So I, I want to talk about free textbooks and free educational software. And I do this uh, very subjectively from a point of view of a foundation that I have started. Uh, the content it is here. I'm not going to uh, dwell on it. Let's get right to it so we can save time. Who is that handsome man with no makeup? <laughs> And no jewelry. <laughs> are we are we okay? Yeah. Everybody can see. Okay, so I want to start with uh, what is knowledge worth? Just a simple question. What is the value of knowledge? Um, and here's something that mostly everybody knows: Pythagoras theorem. It is uh, for as far as we know, and it is, is two thousand five hundred years old. How much do you think this is worth, Pythagoras theorem? How much, how much value would you assign to it? It calculated all the buildings that were ever built that had you know, to do right angles, uh, or, or there's a simple way to, to construct a right angle, just put, take a string of length 12, divide it into portions three, four, and five, and you have a right angle. Uh, but how much is this worth? And all the electronics that came out of this, all the distance calculations in multiple dimensions, what do you think this is worth? Maybe you could possibly calculate all that was ever invented from it, including the, the uh, volume of a sphere. That relied on Pythagoras' theorem. You know, Archimedes, he came up with the volume of the sphere. But here's another example. A theorem where you cannot even place a value to it. So it's the fundamental theorem of information theory. Information theory was born in 1948. Today, we live in the information age. Every, every single new product has an I in front of it, an iPhone, an iPad, an I this, I that. Uh, but this theorem, all it says, all it says is that there exists a code that is guaranteed to achieve the channel capacity. Without going into what channel capacity means, how you compute it, it's right there on the board behind Mr. Shannon. And I don't know why I misspelled Shannon. It should have been Shannon, not Shano. But uh, Shannon came up uh, uh, with the theory and he proved it. And the proof is ingenious in a way that he proves that a code exists. Yet, he doesn't tell you how to construct the code. And he set in motion 50, 60 years of research how to get to that code. It created a new field, yet it didn't create a product that you could place a value. What is that theorem worth? Monetary value. More questions. What is the value of knowledge together? What is the price? Is knowledge capital? Okay, if it's capital, you can sell it. If you sell something, think yourself, how much do you charge your own children to teach them something? Should you charge? Most of us don't charge our children. But if it is capital, you are, you are students here. You are students. Supposedly, you're very good students, the best. Okay. Well, you should pay more. 
Why? More knowledge got into your heads than an average person's. Okay, if this is capital, we should be charging those more, exactly those who get more into their head. Well, it doesn't work that way, right? It doesn't work. Imagine if we charge knowledge, uh, knowledge transfer. Uh, and then no, we, we, if we treated the next generation unfairly and charge them for knowledge that we transfer, what if they can't pay? What if they simply cannot pay? Okay. Further, there's an ethical question. Should we, the older generation, charge you? When in the end, you're going to support us. We'll get old. And you're going to support us through pension funds and your work. Okay. And if we charge you for your knowledge, you won't be able to do the jobs that are high paying. Okay. And then we're basically shooting, our, shooting ourselves in the foot. Because if you don't do high paying jobs, we don't get supported by high paying, uh, by high paid individuals. So, of course, somebody else from the audience uh, knowledge is priceless. It is priceless and therefore we cannot charge for it. And it is the basic truth uh, that everybody intuitively gets. We all get it. Now, don't confuse knowledge, don't conflate knowledge with uh, the, the job of teaching. A teacher needs to be paid. Instruction, right? you pay for instruction, but you don't pay for knowledge. And, and so this is all uh, very well understood. The, the uh, UN uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights says that education shall be free. Okay? And also, we're very important here, uh, the, the third part of this Article 26, that parents, parents, not the government, Okay. Not religious groups. Parents have the prior right to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children. Now, this is important. This number three rarely gets implemented. Mostly governments take it on themselves to choose, or religious groups or, or some NGOs. Very rarely it's the parents who actually get that choice. In the Serbian constitution, something very similar is written. Primary education is mandatory and free. Now, how does it work in practice? Let's see the situation in Serbia. Serbia is the third poorest nation per capita in Europe. You won't see it in statistics. And the, st the statistics say the following. The lowest in Europe per capita is Kosovo. Moldova, Albania, then Ukraine. Serbia, if you count from the bottom up, is right at position 10. But that's only because those statistics do not include Kosovo into Serbia. If you look at what truly the borders of Serbia are within the United Nations, the way it's uh, recognized, uh, Serbia would be number three from the bottom right where you, the Ukraine is. Now, interesting fact, this is, these are two countries, border regions between East and West that have very similar problems and very rich countries, rich in the sense that their plains, their enough food to feed everyone. I mean, the Ukraine fed the rest of the Soviet Union. Yet these two countries uh, uh, have the lowest per capita incomes in Europe, Europe, third from the bottom. Look at the situation in Serbia. The minimum, minimal wage is 340 euros, not euros, uh, dollars per month. $340 per month, where the minimal market basket is $390 per month. You barely, you don't even have enough to cover the minimal expenses with your minimal wage here in Serbia. Now, you may say minimal wage, it's, it's people don't really work for that. Yes, they do. People do work for that minimal wage in Serbia. The, the uh, median wage is way below the average wage in Serbia. And imagine two people on a minimal wage salary. They barely make enough for the average market basket. Imagine now a family with one worker, 
one minimum wage worker lucky to have a job if they have a job at all. Having two children, two children in school, two kids in elementary school, where their books cost $180 per grade, per child. Two children, two children in elementary school will cost you $360 to buy books for their kids. In Serbia, books are not free. Books are not free. That's a rare country in Europe where books are not given to children for free. And if you are in this group making minimum wage, now you have a choice. Let's see. Your choice is, is I don't know if you, oh, this is bad. I don't have a pointer here, so it won't work. Your choice is either eat this month or send your kids to school. Now read this again, get it? You know, I, I don't think any of you are in this situation here in the audience, but you need to think what that means. You either eat or your kids go to school. That's alarming. That is alarming for a country that needs educated people in order to prosper. It's really alarming. Why is Serbia like this? Many reasons. We have a textbook cartel at work in Serbia. A cartel in the true sense of that word. A cartel. We have the, 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 the textbook market in Serbia is foreign profit driven. It is not driven by the needs, educational needs of this country. It is driven by profit of foreign companies foreign publishers who don't have an interest in educating Serbia. They have interest in profit. And they come from countries where textbook markets are regulated in a much different way and are much fairer to the population. Yet, when it comes to implementing these fair policies in other countries, those countries, the homes of these uh, uh, publishers, those countries in Serbia actually support the policies of the publishers and not the people of Serbia. Special interests are at play. What is special interest? Well, corruption, basically. If you put your private interests, your personal interest before uh, the common good, that's a special interest, and the politicians who are inept. They're basically politicians we're unwilling to tackle this problem because it's hard. They may lose their jobs because they may get somebody higher up angry. So we have a lack of collective will to root out special interests. We have a brutal, now, now I, I come from America and this is not happening in America. This bastion of capitalism and liberalism doesn't have a brutal system as this as we do have in Serbia. So we have this brutal post-communist capitalism at work that is not happening, happening in other countries where capitalism is rooted. So what is at work here? What is the basic principle here is we have some kids, they need books. And we have a teacher who has knowledge. We have a teacher, most of us who are teachers, we actually like to transfer knowledge. We do that. We do that for free. We love it. Most of us even write books. I wrote books, not textbooks. I wrote books of my lectures and I just give them freely to, to my students. And I know many professors who do that. I know professors who write actual textbooks and put them up for free. So there's this action that, that professors and teachers take just giving books to kids. Okay, now, you can't do that. I, I, you need a distribution network uh, to give thousands of books to thousands of kids, but today that is easy. Just write it up, illustrate it, make it interesting, put it on the internet, you're done. It can be done. It is as simple as that today. And of course, of course, this teacher wants to be paid. 
The teacher would do this anyhow. Teacher will do it even without pay. Okay? Just give them a fair pay. What does that mean? Well, give a teacher a position at a school or a university as long as they're satisfied with that position. They will do this freely. So how does it actually work in practice? We have the, the same scenario, the same scenario, a teacher more than willing to, to uh, provide a book to the students who need it, but then a publisher, and I don't know, okay, my, the, the, the fonts are different on this computer. The publisher gets in the way. And the publisher says, oh, wait a minute. I am the guy who knows how to make books. Not you, the author, not the kids who get it. I should be the one making these books. Why? Well, they want money for it. And then they involve a distributor. Of course, the distributor also wants money for it. And then a business gets built. And when there's a, where there is a business, there's a regulator, there's a lawmaker, there's a approval, approver, and my, oh, now, now I see what happened. My, my fonts, this was not the spelling error. Something happened to the font when we transferred to your computer. Anyhow, so you start getting this elaborate network of people who get involved. Okay? That, and, and, and the number of people who are involved exceeds the number who are really needed. And it's all now money driven. And when it's money driven, driven you, these, these actors in this market start forging relationships with each other. Okay, you, the publisher, wants the adopter to adopt the publisher's book and not some other publisher's book or some other author's book. Okay, then the publisher starts influencing the lawmakers. Okay, now we have a law in Serbia. Textbooks must be published by publishing companies. It's written in the law. I, as an individual, cannot publish a textbook. Why? 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 Who wrote that law? Well, guess who wrote it? The publishers wrote it for themselves. The foreign publishing companies came to Serbia, and they have more say that me, than me as an author who would write a book. In the end, the books do get to the students, but hey, in Serbia, these kids or their parents, they need to pay. And what happens is that these dollars and money goes to the publisher. But the publisher, or actually they go to the distributor. The distributor is the one who collects the first check. But uh, the money goes to the publisher, and of course the publisher uses this money, okay, to maintain all these relationships. Legal or, or illegal relationships. They're maintained by the money that came from the kids. Think about it. Think about what we're doing in Serbia. We are charging our kids the transfer of knowledge. We are doing something in Serbia that no other country in Europe does. No other country in Europe does this. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing something that's so bad for us? And then we are also doing something bad for these Teachers, when these teachers, these guys on the right, when they see how much money is involved in this entire network, they say, hey, I want a fair share of that pie because after all, it is my work that all of you guys are profiting on. So we, we have a very sick system. And let me show you what this actually costs to make books, because I know I've, we've started in the foundation making books. The authors in Serbia are happy with roughly $3,500 per book. That's how cheap labor is in Serbia. That's what they're happy with. They, they, they also like to get some small values per, per copy. In the end, $6,000 pays you the authors of a textbook. That's the cost. Uh, there's 
cost for for editors, designers, and illustrators, and that's about another three thousand dollars. Taxes and fees to the government, another three thousand dollars. Because we, uh, whenever you pay somebody in Serbia, you also, you also have to uh, pay the government some some portion. Uh, in the end, it is about twelve thousand dollars or ten thousand euros. Ten thousand euros makes a book in Serbia, a textbook, elementary school textbook. That's what it costs. To cover the entire elementary school, grades one through eight, you need 108 titles. Each title, title is $10,000. You multiply, you get a million dollars, buys you, sorry, this should have been euros, yeah. Million euros, buys you all the textbooks, creates all the textbooks needed for uh, elementary school. And notice that most of these textbooks, a good portion, uh, roughly 40%, are foreign language. They're electives. Not every student takes all six offered foreign languages. Let's look at further. What does it cost to print books? One dollar per book is what the printing costs. If the printing costs one dollar per book, add another dollar per book. Okay, that will cover for the profit of the publisher, for the warehouse, and for the distribution. Two dollars per book is a fair price for a book that everybody should be happy with. The printers make money, the publishers make money, the warehouse is covered, the distributor is covered. Every student needs, needs roughly on average 10 books. That's how, much they, how many they need. This, in our system, that number is way inflated. You've got first graders running around with 15 books. And, and these uh, mandatory notebooks. Why? Money. But you don't need to give all these books to, to, to first graders. They don't need them to get, to get literate. Roughly 10 million euros per year is what it takes to print all books new and distribute new books to every kid every year. It's just 10 million euros. That's not much for any government. It's not much for, Serb for the Serbian government either. So here's what the, what the math is. The investment here is 1 million euro. That's what it takes to create all these 100 books, 100 titles. To print all of them requires about 10 million years. If you want to print every book new, you don't want to recycle them, you want to print them new every year, this is what it takes. But this is what the market size is. One million dollar investment, one time investment, creates a market of 80 million euros, 80 million euro per year. Where does the money go? It doesn't go for printing. The printing is the green part. Where does that money go? Profit to the publisher, profit to the distributor, money for the promoter, it goes into corruption, it's a lot of money for something that costs only so little to create. Of course, the government takes the 10%. The government takes the value-added tax 10%. So the money, the government does get something. And you could argue, well, the government likes this because the government gets the yellow part. But it's actually the robbery of both the citizens and the state. So we have a cartel at work. So there's a textbook cartel uh, of, of supposedly independent competitors, but they're not, they don't act independent. They act together, they, co they collude in order to fix prices, uh, secure monopolies for each other. Every school is a monopoly. Once a publisher gets into, into a school, they practically own the school because every kid in that school needs to buy their book. Okay. And though they don't rationalize, they don't do cost reduction. Books have never been more expensive. Every year, the price goes up. So the cartel name, you can read it here in Serbian, but it does exist. How could all of this be organized? Now, now let me show you. We have this investment of 1 million euro. That's unavoidable. We need to, to print. Okay, maybe you don't need to print. Maybe you can put something on the internet. Maybe you don't have to give every kid's kid a new new book every year, but let's say you do. This this is 
supposedly unavoidable as the cost. And that would, that would be it. That's it. That's what it should cost. The rest, the rest should stay in the pocket of parents. And if it stays in the pocket of parents, that's, this is 70 million euro per year. Say it stays in the pocket of parents. What do you think the parents would do, would do, would do with this? They're not, Serbia is a poor country, which is uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of parents. They're not going to take hundreds of thousands of trips and, and take their money to Switzerland and put in a bank account. You're going to spend it on other things. Food, wardrobe, maybe a computer for their kids. A computer is a, a tablet, is 100 euro. It's much cheaper than uh, uh, one set of books per year. But not only that, these other things have a higher level of value added tax, 20%. Actually, the government would make more money in this scheme than in the previous scheme, because 20% of that 70 million euro is much more, roughly double, than 10% of the 80 million euro. So the government makes double the money. And what can the government do? Take that money and reinvest. Keep the 10% as it did before, the other 10, left over 10%, used to fund the making of books and the printing of books. The government is actually doing things against itself, its own interests here, and the interests of the people. So what do we do in this? So, of course, the government doesn't want to do this. They, they had, you know, we are 30 years into post communism, or maybe you call it 20 years post-communism, the government does not want to do this. So if the government won't do it, maybe somebody will. So here's what we are going, we are doing at the foundation. We finance the creation of books. We basically invest the 1 million euro to create the books, and there's a site. Well, there's one thing we do. Every book that we create, we put on the internet. As, as a PDF file completely for free. Anybody can take it. Anybody can use it, anybody can print it. Okay, I don't know if this is called open source. It isn't, but uh, let's discuss that one. Uh, the parent pays this, but at a fair price, 0 0.02 cents per page. That's two dinars per page if you want a printed book. You don't have to buy a printed book. You can take it off the internet as a PDF file, it's yours. But if you want a printed book, we suggest you pay this price because this is cheaper than taking it to a, uh, a photocopy shop. We basically want to eliminate this part. Take it away from the market, put it in the pockets of Serbian citizens, they'll reinvest it somehow into whatever else is uh, uh, out there. And they'll, with, with what they keep in the pocket, they will stimulate the economy further. And the government will have their 20%. So this is people or willing individuals that work. Step in for the government. If the government won't do it, there are individuals, foundations who will. So let's also talk about the social responsibility. Actually, even companies could help. We have now the first sponsor here, a company that decided to sponsor the making of books. Okay, we have only one, that's this company, Mona. Uh, maybe you know, speaking of gender equality, uh, well, maybe it's, they're trying to market to mothers. In Serbia, mothers take care of uh, the needs of children more so than fathers, and mothers are, ones who buy these uh, fashion bags. So here's something where gender inequality may be working in our interest. Um, <laughs> uh, we also have sponsors uh, for, of printed books. So uh, um, small, small companies, it takes about 10,000 euros to sponsor a book, but much less to print, much less to print books. So uh, social responsibility. Uh, here it is. If the government will not do it, nothing is stopping us as individuals to do it or as foundations. 
Okay. There are authors who write books for free. There are authors who work with us. They are willing to write these books for free without an honorarium. They don't, they don't take a pay for it. Lawyers work for free for the foundation. They don't charge. It's pro bono. All the work for the foundation. Accountants that work for the foundation work for free. All in the interest of getting books out there for, for, for the children. But also, also corporations. Corporate sponsors uh, help. It costs uh, $10,000 for one textbook to be a sponsor of a textbook. But smaller companies with, with uh, about 300 euros, about 300 euros uh, buys textbooks for one classroom. And we have companies that are stepping in. So speaking of social engineering, if the government won't do it, there's nothing stopping us from doing the right thing instead of the government. The government cannot do anything about it. We just put it on the internet. And we know that we are on the right track because if we were not on the right track, we would not have these company sponsors that came. We didn't ask for it, they just came to us. So this is a conference on software and, and uh, things that I have not been talking about, but you will have uh, more talks on, on digital books. So let me talk about digital books. Can it be free? Of course it can be free. Now I'm talking about educational software, not just the textbook that goes on the internet, but educational software. It can be free, absolutely. Absolutely it can be free as well. Uh, if you have somebody willing to invest in making a textbook, there's only a small step left. It's relatively easy to go from a PDF to a fully uh, interactive software, you use basically the PDF as the starting point. Uh, we can talk about the price of these digital book textbooks, but yes, they exist. Uh, the PDF is the starting point. You just develop software from a software platform, uh, insert additional material, interactive content. Uh, it's adaptable and it's free, but it's not open source. It, 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 you cannot make textbooks open source because they have to be approved by the government. We still live in a world where the government does approve these textbooks, at least, at least in Serbia. So uh, we cannot give them out freely for anyone, anyone to change, everyone to change. It has to be fixed as it is, but it, it is free. Um, and what we did in the foundation, we developed these textbooks, uh, digital textbooks. It took us uh, about six months to develop the platform. We have done something that no other publishing company has done in Serbia. We developed a platform here in Serbia, Serbian platform, Serbian programmers. We do not import the platform from Poland or, for, or from Hungary, like all the other publishers do. It was developed in Serbia and it actually works better than those platforms. It's free. So here's how it works. So let's get that. Uh, I'll just show you the website. And uh, let's start the website and, and I'll be I'll be I'll be clicking on this. Yeah, you need to share the screen. Yeah. So how am I doing with time? Good to worry with. Yeah, let's let's try. No, it's not really working. I need to go maybe to fifth grade. Oh, okay. So the, the, the books are listed here. Every one of these books is a PDF. It's online, it's free, but let's go to say fifth grade. Why fifth grade? That's where uh, technology engineering is first introduced to, uh, uh, to, to elementary school kids. When you hover over, here, you see, you can click on a few things. Let's try first the PDF. So the PDF, what you get is a, is a PDF of, of the textbook, the boring PDF of, of, a, of a first level engineering textbook. Okay, if I could, so the PDF is, is actually there. It's boring, oh, I should say second page, of course, as every textbook in Serbia needs to have the um, right here, you see the uh, 
number, the Ministry of Education needs to approve it. So you can't just put any textbook you want. It needs to be approved by the Ministry of Education. But let's go back. I can further go back. Oh, I can't. Yep, there. So let's click now on this dig digital textbook. And somehow it's not, this is not opening right on your machine, but can you, can you uh, give me full screen window? No full screen window. Oh, we're, okay. Well, oh, okay. That that. So you can flip. You can flip pages. Okay, and then let's go to some other uh, chapter. It's reading in the chapter, I guess. Okay, flip the pages, and then here is that interactive content. So this is that interactive and, and oh. okay, I, I flipped too far. This is now asking you to do a test, a self-evaluation test. So these digital books, they have self-evaluations, but let's see, pictures, you can pop them up. Maybe there are some videos, et cetera. Ah, it doesn't really work for me. I'm not, I'm not good at it. Let's see if there's a video playing. Rezime saobraćaj 1. Saobraćaj je star koliko i ljudsko društvo. Actually, a video should be playing, but it's playing in the back and we don't have that screen. Anyhow, that's a, I'm not going to bore you with further. But that's a digital interactive textbook that's very, very easy to make. Once you have a PDF, all you do is you have a platform, software platform that, that automatically reads this PDF. You give it, link it to some videos and pictures or self-evaluation tests. All of a sudden, you have an interactive book that, that you can flip on your machine. Even that, I argue, should be free. It costs you a, just a one-time investment to create that digital textbook. Okay. Once it's created, there's no more cost. You know, you guys are programmers. You don't charge twice to program the same thing two times, right? It's one charge, one-time charge. Put it on the internet. It's free on the internet. So let me, let me conclude with that and go back to my last slide, which is just a, uh, a thank you slide. So maybe you don't even have to show it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your inspiring talk. Um, we have a lot of questions and comments. Um, I would like to share one thing as, since you're here at the School of Electrical Engineering. Um, maybe it's the right time to inform you that you're at the right place and you're sharing the right thoughts because almost 10 years ago, we've made free our textbooks on our website. So they're available to our students and to other students that want to, um, to use them. So um, I have first question. Um, it's in uh, Serbian, I'll try to translate it. It says there are a lot of activists, especially new Novi Sad, that um, advocate for free education, so is you, and they ask how can they help? Uh, how can uh, uh, activists help? Yes. Please, please uh, go to your elementary schools within your uh, cities of residence. That's where you need to argue. Have the teachers and the principals of the schools adopt free books. It's for the good of the children. Uh, even those individuals who have the means, who can afford books at these very high prices for Serbia, even they have the responsibility to adopt free books. Because 
Sadly, those that cannot afford them are actually afraid to admit. It's, they're, they're stigmatized against admitting that they don't have the means to afford something as simple as a book. But if you are making 300 euros a month, there's stigma about being poor. There's stigma about poverty. People in that situation do not have, they're ashamed of it. And they're mostly ashamed in front of their own kids, not in front of society. They're mostly ashamed to admit it to their own kids. Those of us with the means should actually understand this social uh, impact and this social behavior. And actually those of us that are wealthy enough to afford books, we should be the leaders to make these books free for those that actually need them. But since you started with, with the intro about, uh, yes, I'm aware that, that um, the uh, Faculty of Electrical Engineering have their books online. Uh, similar things happen in Novi Sad. Similar things happen at Harvard. Similar things happen at MIT. Similar things happen at Stanford. All those professors put their books online free. You can go to Stanford's and Harvard's and MIT's websites and their books are free for anyone to use, not just their students. Why do we charge our elementary school children for books? It's beyond me. Thank you. We have also another question. Um, it's from Anna. Uh, first, thank you very much for the efforts with the foundation. It's truly amazing and congratulations. And her question is, um, she has two questions actually. What are some ways we as intellectuals in Serbia can help? I think you answered part, part that question previously. And the second one is, what do you see as the next solvable social problem after the free textbooks? Is there a new frontier for the Alec Kavčić Foundation? Uh, well, uh, the found <laughs> good question. I am I am not a social engineer. I'm an electrical engineer, and I happen to work in education. So, education is is my passion, even though electrical engineering is my profession. Uh, we will try to expand this program to uh, to high schools, to secondary education, of course. Um, but it, it will it will not happen immediately. It, ha it has to take some it, it has to take some time. We are still not done fully with the elementary school program. Uh, we the foundation is bound by law to work within the the, the framework of of educational initiatives. So we can't go and, and support church groups or uh, other initiatives uh, within 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 the bounds of it, the education system. That's where we do things, we also uh, donate computers to elementary schools. So I'm here in Serbia, uh, I will visit 10 cities in the next two weeks uh, donating computers, but I don't think donating computers will make as big an impact as, as donating books. Thank you. Um, as Hedy Lamar said, think big. <laughs> we, we will, um, uh, we have a comment from- Yeah, do it anyway. <laughs> Do it anyway. Uh, from Željko Blače, classroom textbooks uh, costs should be first avoided if, if possible. And there is also another comment, so maybe you, you, you might want to elaborate on that. Developing new custom software needs maintenance and upgrade as standards change and underlying software changes. That is extra cost after the initial development. I think that that was a comment to maybe include in, in some next collaboration? Uh, there's always costs associated with uh, maintaining something. Uh, there's costs associated with maintaining a website, but it's minimal. Uh, maintaining software, the cost is actually minimal once you have it up and running. Uh, but since you started the raise the question of costs of software, uh, Today's publishers, the publishers that operate in Serbia also have digital books. Uh, digital books uh, of the, the dominant publishers cost $180 <clears throat> to 
to for for a set of books, say for eighth grade, one hundred and eighty dollars a set of book for books for eighth grade. Um, what do you pay for Microsoft Office for one year? So I'll I'll, I'll mind you mind that that these hundred one hundred eighty dollars that you pay for a set of textbooks for eighth grade, the the password expires at the end of the school year. So it's only a one year cost. Or roughly two hundred dollars to get the textbooks for eighth grade. What does Microsoft Office charge? And still, Microsoft Office charges a lot. Microsoft Office charges you fifty dollars for one year of use of Microsoft. Do you want to convince me now that Microsoft Office is easier to make and maintain than eighth grade textbooks? It's a ripoff. What, what companies are charging for digital books in Serbia is a ripoff. It, it, you know what ripoff means? I don't know if that's a, it's robbery. $200 for a set of textbooks, which are so easy to develop from, from a software point of view, because it's not Microsoft Office. It's not Adobe Acrobat. It doesn't have these, these sexy features we call these uh, uh, this fancy software. Yet that fancy software costs less than textbooks for your children. Think about it. And uh, it's thank you. It's not so uh, hard and it's not so expensive to maintain, believe me. Thank you for your comment. And in the end, we got changed font due to not open standards in Microsoft <laughs> Office. Um, we have a question from editorial board from Professor Pevic and then Professor Gerazer from North Macedonia. Okay, just a short one. Uh, is it strange that we have open and free textbooks at university level for 10 years? And why is it so hard to have open and free textbooks for elementary school? Because it seems to me that it is much harder to create university textbook than elementary school textbook. Uh, actually, you're right. First, let's get to the second point of your yeah. question first. Of course, it is much harder to write a textbook at the university level. Uh, maybe in Serbia there are two or three people who have the knowledge to write a textbook on advanced electronics. Okay, but uh, third grade math we have in Serbia maybe 100 people who can write a textbook for third grade math. So uh, why is it then that people, professors at the university level are willing to give their books for free? Well, first of all, the government does not get in the way of university books. The governments don't control university books, but the government does get in the way of controlling textbooks for uh, school children. And the government does a bad job. The government then sets standards and you have to comply. We are a country that has a law on textbooks which in my view is ridiculous. There is actually a law on textbooks that has to go through parliament, has to be voted on. Uh, and uh, uh, it's like having a law on any other product. Why not have a law on, on uh, I don't know, pens or, or blackboards? It's ridiculous. But the government got in the way. Otherwise, it would be easy. It would be goofy giving the books for, to those uh, little ducklings and i see no reason why it should be that way um, other countries don't have these laws well they do have programs that they follow but other countries do not set laws on how books need to be written and the only reason these laws exist in serbia is they protect the publishers not you the people or the students they protect the publishers so that's why it's not easy. But writing the third grade math book is relatively easy, much easier than writing what you write and what you teach uh, every day. Yet it, it, is, it is actually a paradox that you have uh, very top educators at Stanford, at Harvard, at, at University of Belgrade writing books for free. Yet those books that are easier to write textbooks for third grade math or, 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 you know, fifth grade biology, those are not free in Serbia at least. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a next question from uh, Professor Gerasov, then one comment and one question from the audience. Hi, uh, thanks, Nalisa. Um, thank you, Alec. Uh, this was a very inspiring talk. Uh, all, all the best from, uh, from Macedonia to your endeavor, and I wish you a lot of success in uh, your future activities. I think it's a shining example of how we can change the world. Uh, and I'm really happy that it's coming from the region here. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm thinking uh, uh, in Macedonia, there were kind of similar initiatives now with the Corona crisis. There were um, teachers from elementary schools contributing videos for, for lectures on YouTube. So uh, that can be used in some uh, like uh, digital digital uh, um, textbook. Uh, there's also the foundation uh, Kantarot, which uh, uh, established a portal called uh, Nauka za Deca, uh, Science for Kids, where they translated a lot of few school videos. I don't know if you, you know these videos there. there uh, few school is a UK foundation that records basically educational videos and they have animations and everything. So, um, uh, I, I'm, I would like to ask, uh, uh, are you thinking bigger than Serbia? I mean, uh, would you like to expand maybe in the region or collaborate with uh, partners from Macedonia, for example, and, and the wider region um, for, for the publishing, but also for this uh, software platform that you established for the digital, digital textbooks that uh, can be very useful for, for us as well? Uh, uh, well, first of all, let's say that let's let's get it clear that um, uh, Macedonia, Macedonia does have free books for uh, for children. So does Montenegro. So does Albania. So does Hungary. So does Croatia. So does Slovenia. Uh, uh, Serbia is the only one that does not. Um, so Macedonia has solved this issue in a, in a different way. Uh, sharing the software and, and expanding the initiative across other countries, yes, in principle, uh, but I do not want uh, uh, any collaboration to defocus our efforts in Serbia. Um, the efforts in Serbia are still under attack by uh, uh, people and powers that, that uh, uh, can, can, I mean, I have seven lawsuits against me in Serbia because of what I'm doing. Uh, uh, and uh, not, so that's just one thing. And, and uh, life is being made very difficult for us in Serbia. If we start expanding too rapidly into other regions, I'm afraid uh, we will lose focus in Serbia. And Serbia is, uh, as I said, a country where this is needed far more than others, where, where, the, 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 where the problem is actually solved. But in principle, yes, uh, the sharing the platform would be something we would do, or at least mm. encourage. Uh, I don't. I see no reason for not doing it. Mm. Yeah, in fact, uh, so uh, Jelko had a comment that um, uh, maintaining the platform would be extra cost. But um, uh, you mentioned uh, open source, so if if there is a community behind this, and I'm sure a lot of IT engineers have children in school that need books that can uh, contribute to uh, open source, a free software project. And this is one way to kind of perpetuate this and uh, improve it. Well, uh, the platform is not open source and it's not really free. Uh, the foundation paid for the platform and the development of the platform. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but the company that developed it uh, has uh, the copyrights to, to, to the mm -hmm. software and uh, now. Yeah, so uh, one way to keep it going is making it free I mean, in future if it's uh, at all possible. I agree. Thank you, Professor Gerazov. We Thank have you Thank you. If we have one comment uh, that I'd like to read to you. It's a similar situation was with the scientific journals in Serbia 20 years ago. And research institutions includes, including universities paid a lot of money to foreign publishers and distributors. But after we organized, we saved a lot of government money. But we did this with a lot of understanding in government, especially Ministry of Science. So the key is in understanding and recognizing in the government 
think big and it will happen. It could be done even in Serbia. Congratulations for all your efforts, Mr. Kartus Bravo from Biljana Kosanovic from University of Belgrade. So I think there is there is still hope for Serbia to adopt uh, uh, free free textbooks. We also have one question um, from audience. I think Professor Shevarec. Hello, thank you. Uh, I'm Veron Shavarec, coming from Faculty for Organizational Sciences, and we do have open source software development center there, and we've been involved with open source for a number of years, so we have some experience in that domain. Uh, it is very interesting to see how the practices from open source development, uh, I think they can be actually applied both to what you are doing. Uh, there are, of course, some things to consider and how to overcome these uh, legal barriers and uh, organizational. Uh, just one comment. Uh, you mentioned that it is difficult to approve once the educational content is created. Um, it might be possible to approve a specific version, so not, not just like a release, not every change, but if there is a, uh, let's say, a community uh, powered by like a Apache Foundation or a Free Software Foundation, that it is official re uh, uh, release of a book by the community, and if the specific release is approved, then it can be used. Not to, it is impossible, of course, to approve every change done by every teacher anywhere that's impossible to do but if there is one place where the community of teachers collaborate and agree uh, about uh, some some final release of the book and if that book is approved uh, i think that is a way to to, to to go for it can you comment on that so uh, i i don't know well first of all yes every textbook in Serbia elementary school level needs to be approved by the government before it could be used in the classroom. So let's say somebody goes on the internet, grabs one of these books and uh, uh, textbooks, uh, PDF format, and they work on it, make it better, a group of teachers. Yes, they would have to resubmit it as their own work and get it reapproved. It is an elaborate process that, that scares many teachers and, and I don't know if anyone tried, but they're welcome to try. Yeah, uh, we would not interfere. We, it's it's uh, 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 on the other hand, it does require a lot of work, and it re requires meddling and changing. Mm -hmm. Not many people are willing to do that. Uh, I think actually that many people from uh, uh, IT education would be willing to do things like that, and maybe. Uh, and uh, I agree that they wouldn't be willing to submit it for approval and go into that process, but maybe that could be the role of the foundation. Just like Apache Foundation deals with all the legal and infrastructural and organizational things for the software development and releases and uh, protecting the rights of the authors. It's some think about something uh, like a the, role of the foundation. The foundation owns uh, the intellectual property. For all the books that we, we, uh, 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 make the foundation all owns the intellectual uh -huh. property. Now, what does that mean? It means go ahead and use it. We are not going to go after anyone who who uses it and makes it better. But we are not going to be in a position that we help everybody who wants to change it create a change and then resubmit to the government. That's just too much work. Mm -hmm. But if anyone wants to do it, go ahead, do it. But maybe now that you've said that. Maybe this model is better suited for, for secondary education. Uh, there are many trade schools in Serbia at the secondary level. Um, you have the gymnasiums, but then you have uh, all sorts of other trade schools uh, where uh, books are not available because the sizes, the population sizes, the class sizes are small and the major publishers don't have an interest in making new books because they cannot make profit on them. This is a place where teachers themselves could get together and do this for the needs of the students. Now, are they altruistic enough to get that done, even though they're not going to make money? And they won't make money because the publishers don't make money. There's just no, the market isn't there to make money. Will they do it? Up to them. The foundation cannot be a place where everybody comes to make make uh, books because uh, it, it simply can't work that way too many 
Too many oh, of course. Are out thank there. you. Thank, thank you very much, Professor Kautich, for a wonderful lecture. Um, and I, I, I really enjoyed it leading this session. And I have to tell you that you and your lecture inspired our next session, which is called Free Software and Open Hardware in Education.